We had the privilege of sitting down with Clix, a three-time MDI winner and current reigning champion. Drawing from his unparalleled expertise as one of the world's top DPS players, we invited Clix to provide a comprehensive breakdown of the strengths and weaknesses of each melee DPS spec. But that's not all. We also delved into his predictions for one particular spec that he believes will be a game changer in this year's MDI. Get ready for some surprises and incredible insights as we analyze and rank all of the melee DPS for Season 2 M+. In order to rank our melee DPS, we will be doing so by taking each one and assigning a score out of 10 across three distinct metrics, the first of which being damage. This is mostly weighted towards good AoE damage. However, we will also take into account both single target, target swapping ability, and also priority damage, as these can be equally significant factors in determining overall damage output. The second metric is survivability. This aspect holds significant importance, particularly in Season 2, where certain mechanics and bosses can inflict very sustained high damage. Therefore, specs that are naturally durable and well kitted to handle such mechanics are valued very highly. Lastly, we have the third metric, utility. This is quite comprehensive and includes several factors. Mob control, which comprises of crowd control, slows, interrupts, and general AoE crowd control options available to the spec. And general party-wide utility, encompassing beneficial buffs, cooldowns, off-healing capabilities, battle reses, dispels, and any other elements that contribute to enhancing the specialization's overall usefulness inside of dungeons. Let us begin by diving into the warrior class. Between the two DPS specializations, Fury undoubtedly reigns as the most dominant option at the moment. However, it is important to note that both specializations offer distinct playstyles that set them apart. In regards to damage, Fury is the gold standard for what a melee DPS should bring and are currently doing some incredible things in the Mythic Plus scene right now. Fury currently doesn't really have any weaknesses, but primarily excels at single target damage where they're unrivaled by any other melee right now. One of the main highlights of Fury has to be that even with a single target oriented talent build, you can still pump AoE damage just from your standard rotation. That being said, in order to do large scale AoE, Fury is however reliant on cooldowns like Thunderous Roar and Ravager, which are up for almost every pack anyway. However, due to the majority of their standard damage rotation passively cleaving, they can often top damage on any pack up to 5 mobs. Furthermore, due to talents like Anger Management, Fury has very limited downtime on their major offensive cooldown recklessness, which means you're never really without damage. So right out of the gates, we'll be giving Fury a 9 out of 10 for damage. On the other hand, Arms Warrior falls slightly behind in comparison. Although they still perform decently well in both AoE and single target situations, it is nowhere near the level of Fury. However, Arms possesses a unique niche, its immense uncapped AoE damage potential, where abilities like Bladestorm, coupled with the continuous passive damage of Deep Wounds, allows Arms Warriors to frequently outperform even some of the more popular meta specializations on specific pulls. Overall though, due to their low single target damage, we'll be giving Arms 6 out of 10. One area where both specs excel is in terms of survivability, arguably being two of the most passively durable specs in the game right now. Their high armor levels, coupled with the ability to swap into defensive stance, make them more than equipped for handling most levels of boss or pack damage, as well as even having the ability to spell reflect certain mechanics on some bosses. Then to add to the passive survivability is the additional self-sustain from both impending victory as well as pain and gain, which puts the warrior basically up there with tanks in terms of survivability levels. And if your passive survivability isn't enough, both specs even have very strong defensive cooldowns for those higher keys. Fury brings enraged regeneration, while while arms has retaliation, but in all honesty, you can't really die unless you mess up. Aside from their different defensive cooldowns, Fury still, however, has a slight edge when it comes to survivability. The reason for this being the additional, but albeit minor, healing from Bloodthirst, coupled with the fact that due to wearing double two-handed weapons, you have a much higher baseline health pool, which surprisingly is a high factor. In conclusion, not many melee specs can rival the warrior's exceptional passive survivability. Considering this, we assign Fury a rating of 9 and Arms a rating of 8 out of 10 for their survivability. Our final metric is where both specs fall short, and that's with the lack of utility they bring. When it comes to mob control, both specs struggle to incorporate Shockwave into their talent trees without sacrificing essential abilities. This lack of an easily accessible crowd control option leaves them with only the unreliable AoE fear from Intimidating Shout, which is more of an emergency tool than a reliable crowd control method. Stormbolt and Pummel are of course still factors, but as we all know, single target stops are something far less valuable in Mythic Plus as a whole. 
Regarding party utility, warriors are also lacking in this aspect. Their primary tools consist of Rallying Cry and Battle Shout. Rallying Cry proves useful for providing an additional buffer to survive incoming mechanics, benefiting either the warrior or their team. Battle Shout, on the other hand, is far less valuable, as in the current meta, most groups are primarily preferring to run with casters who don't benefit from the increased attack power. Taking these factors into account, we assign both Arms and Fury a score of 5 out of 10 in terms of utility. After tallying up the scores, Fury earns a commendable 23 out of 30. Despite its limited utility, Fury remains highly sought after for all key levels. This is primarily due to its exceptional damage output, surpassing many other specializations, particularly in single target encounters or small scale packs, which holds significant importance in the current season. Additionally, Fury's passive survivability reduces the need for extensive healing or external cooldowns to handle mechanics, making them reliable and efficient across various key levels. With their only real weakness as mentioned being that lack of utility, but their damage and survivability more than make up for this aspect. Arms, on the other hand, receives a total score of 19 across three metrics. When a class such as a warrior brings nothing but damage to the party, you're going to have to be competing for that top spot in order to be viable. Sadly, Arms falls slightly short when compared to Fury in every department, aside from anything that isn't uncapped AoE, where they can utilize Bladestorm for huge on-demand burst. So in the current dungeon pool of Season 2, there is limited justification for choosing Arms over Fury in any situation. Rogue is our next class, bringing a unique set of skills and playstyle to the Mythic Plus scene with three distinct specializations all varying in strength. Currently, Subtlety Rogue stands as the undeniable powerhouse among the three specializations. It offers a remarkable balance of both single target and AoE damage. When facing AoE packs, Subtlety Rogues can dish out impressive damage through the combination of Black Powder and Secret Technique during their Shadow Dance window. The consistent generation and expenditure of combo points allow them to significantly reduce the downtime of their key burst abilities in Shadow Dance and Secret Technique thanks to talents like Deepening Shadows. As a result, Subtlety Rogues experience minimal downtime compared to other specs. Furthermore, Subtlety excels at funneling damage into priority targets, as well as having great target swapping capabilities. Prior to 10.1.5, Subtlety was already performing exceptionally, but after receiving a 4% damage increase, they're now, without a doubt, the most dominant melee. Overall, we'll be rewarding them a 10 out of 10 for damage. Outlaw has been a dominant force in previous seasons where their unique damage profile has always been a highly desirable asset. This comes primarily thanks to Blade Flurry, as it allows Outlaw to pump damage into a high priority target, all while still passing maintaining very high AoE damage. This combination enables Outlaw to excel at passive damage, consistently dealing sustained damage throughout the entire dungeon while not being reliant on cooldowns. However, this characteristic of low burst and high sustained damage can be both advantageous and disadvantageous depending on the situation. In the current season though, Outlaw Rogue, despite receiving a rather big buff in 10.1.5, still struggles to match the damage output that Subtlety Rogue is capable of achieving across basically every aspect. For this reason, we'll be scoring them a 6 out of 10 for damage. Comparatively, Assassination is the weakest across the three specs. As a whole, Assassination's main niche is its very high single target damage, making the spec surprisingly competitive on tyrannical weeks, despite its limited representation at the moment. However, Assassination's main drawback lies in its lackluster AoE damage and heavy reliance on cooldowns, where without abilities like Vanish and Deathmark, as well as indiscriminate carnage for AoE situations, Assassination's damage output is fairly low. Considering that AoE damage holds considerably higher value than single target, we'll be assigning Assassination our lowest damage score of 3 out of 10. When it comes to survivability, all three rogue specializations share a similar toolkit with a few minor differences. Overall, rogues are not known for being the most inherently durable class, relying primarily on their high versatility levels and situational tools. They excel at mitigating high incoming damage through the usage of potent defensive cooldowns like Vanish, Evasion, and Cloak of Shadows. Additionally, they have the advantage of a cheat death effect, which can prove invaluable in critical situations. However, rogues can struggle when faced with consistent and sustained high damage, such as the third boss in Halls of Infusion, where particularly on tyrannical weeks, rogues may require significant spot healing to survive. So while they may not possess the highest passive durability, if they're able to utilize their cooldowns to negate mechanics, they can be one of the most durable. As a result, we think as a whole, despite their slight differences, a score of 7 out of 10 for all three specs is fair. 
Moving on to utility, all three rogue specs excel in this aspect thanks to their niche utility options. However, rogue utility heavily revolves around mob control, making them masters of single target crowd control. Rogues possess the highest number of single target crowd control abilities among all specs, including kidney shot, blind, kick, and potentially gouge or cheap shot if the situation demands it. This arsenal of control abilities allows rogues to effectively interrupt or lock down key targets, providing invaluable support in managing high priority targets. Assassination in particular deserves mention for its ability to shut down casters on pull with the combination of improved Garrett and Iron Wire. Furthermore, rogues surprisingly bring exceptional party utility, primarily thanks to the highly coveted ability Shroud of Concealment. This ability, when used alone or in combination with Sap, is almost mandatory for certain dungeons, as Shroud of Concealment enables the group to skip packs, making it possible to facilitate the creation of customized routes that can either bypass specific packs when cooldowns are unavailable, or skip to bosses when overcount. The inclusion of Atrophic Poison cannot be neglected, as it adds a damage reduction effect to every mob encountered. This can make a significant difference, particularly in higher keys, where reducing incoming damage becomes crucial. Lastly, Tricks of the Trade is another factor to consider, as it enables rogues to provide their tank with an extra boost of threat on pulls, ensuring better control and stability. Overall, primarily in large part due to the immense value of Shroud of Concealment and the combined utility, all three specs receive a commendable score of 8 out of 10. After tallying up the scores across all three specs, Subtlety emerges as the top performing rogue specialization with a total score of 25, reflecting their current performance. Subtlety brings a well-balanced combination of single target and AoE damage, making them effective in various scenarios. They excel not only in dealing with high priority targets, but also in swiftly swapping targets when needed. Subtlety rogues even have the option to funnel damage, further showcasing their versatility. However, it is worth noting that subtlety can be quite squishy if defensive cooldowns are not utilized effectively. This requires a good understanding of both dungeon mechanics and class abilities, making the point of entry fairly high. Outlaw secures the second highest score among the rogue specs, with a total score of 21. While they excel in various aspects, their overall performance is hindered by their lower damage output compared to primarily that of subtlety rogues. However, if you prefer a less cooldown dependent playstyle in Mythic Plus, and value an easier to grasp experience, Outlaw provides a more user-friendly option. As the lowest scoring spec among the rogue specs, Assassination receives a total score of 18. Unfortunately, Assassination faces several challenges that hinder its performance in Mythic Plus. The primary issue lies in their heavy reliance on cooldowns for significant damage output. However, these cooldowns are not readily available enough to be viable in Mythic Plus scenarios. Nevertheless, Assassination can still find success in situations that put a high focus on single target pressure or small-scale packs. Now let's turn our attention to Death Knights. Interestingly, our expert predicted that one of the Death Knight specializations will have a prominent presence in the MDI this year, despite not being widely represented across the board. That spec is the Frost Death Knight. Arguably, Frost Death Knights are capable of dealing the highest uncapped AoE damage among melee specs currently, making them highly desirable in heavy trash count dungeons, especially if you're pulling around them, as they have the potential to single-handedly carry both the damage and control in a large-scale pull. The key to their high damage lies in the synergy between Pillar of Frost and Death and Decay. Pillar of Frost enhances their strength, while Death and Decay allows Obliterate to cleave multiple targets, further boosting their AoE potential. However, their true power comes when this is combined with a variety of offensive cooldowns, like Empowered Rune Weapon, Abomination Limb, Remorseless Winter, and Frost Worm's Fury. Despite their exceptional performance in heavy AoE scenarios, Frost Death Knights do face a slight limitation when it comes to single target damage, as while still remaining competitive, their single target output falls slightly behind other dominant specs like Subtlety and Fury, so for this reason we'll be rewarding them an 8 out of 10. Unholy, on the other hand, is very similar in that it can pump endless amounts of consistently high damage on large AoE pulls due to the combination of virulent plague, spreading, and epidemic while passively cleaving during Defile. However, where Unholy struggles is when it comes to dealing significant damage on smaller pulls consisting of 3 to 4 mobs, where Epidemic becomes less impactful. On the other hand, Unholy Death Knights truly shine during their cooldowns, particularly in single target situations where they have some of the highest burst potential out of any spec right now. The drawback, however, lies in these lengthy cooldown durations, which heavily limits their overall DPS output across most dungeons. Considering these factors, Unholy Death Knights receive a score of 4 out of 10 for damage. In terms of survivability, Death Knights as a whole are incredibly durable as not only are they a plate class that boasts a much higher health pool in comparison to other DPS specs, 
but they also have access to some very powerful self-defensive tools on top, such as Anti-Magic Shell for dealing with any form of incoming magic damage, Icebound Fortitude, and Lichborn for some additional damage reductions, but more importantly, Death Strike, which as we know, scales from how much damage you take, so as long as you're not getting one shot by a mechanic, you can always Death Strike once or twice and be fine. So overall, we'll be giving both specs a score of 8 out of 10. When it comes to utility, Death Knights primarily lack significant abilities that directly benefit their allies, such as group buffs, damage increases, or party healing. The only utility Death Knight has is Anti-Magic Zone, which can be a useful ability for specific situations, and of course their Battle Res, which is the only real highlight, but alone, these are not enough to make them a desirable choice solely for their utility. Luckily though, despite lacking in party utility, Death Knight does bring some points back with their mob control, which is their main niche right now. Now, where the combination of two charges of death grip coupled with abomination limb makes certain bosses and more importantly dungeon pulls a lot easier to execute and group. Not to mention, both blinding sleet and abomination limb function as fantastic ways to stop multiple casts going through. The only real differences between the two specs are that Frost Death Knight provides a powerful AoE stun whenever using Frost Worm's Fury, whereas Unholy has the additional single target stops from their pet. In general though, we value AoE stops slightly higher, which means we'll be giving Frost Death Knight a score of 6 for utility and Unholy a score of 5. Giving Frost a total score of 22, like we said in the intro, our experts are very hyped for the future of Frost Death Knight and believe it can have a considerable impact on this year's MDI solely for their immense AoE damage output. So if you're looking for an incredibly passively durable melee that excels in easy to dish out AoE damage, then look no further than Frost Death Knight. Unholy Death Knights receive a slightly lower total score of 17, but they have demonstrated their value in Mythic Plus this season when handled by skilled players, especially if you can prioritize larger scaled pulls and strategically leverage their potent cooldowns within the dungeons, Unholy Death Knights can contribute significantly to any group's success. Up next, we have a spec that has been dominating the melee scene across all dungeon levels. It's the Jack of All Trades, the Retribution Paladin. When it comes to damage, Ret as a spec primarily revolves around a one minute timer playing around the cooldown of their Avenging Wrath and Final Reckoning. Rets can often dominate damage from pack to pack with a high focus on short cooldown based AoE burst damage. Single target is where they fall slightly short though. As one of the main drawbacks Retribution suffers from is that in order to excel at AoE damage, you lose considerable single target, but their bursty AoE focused damage profile as a whole makes them fantastic at mid to low level keys, but as you climb up to the higher key levels, packs will live longer and this is where we tend to see them fall off due to their sustained damage output struggling to keep up. Taking these factors into account, we assign Retribution Paladins a surprisingly low score of 6 for damage. While they shine in certain situations, their sustained damage limitations become more apparent as the difficulty increases. For survivability, Retribution is as a whole very durable thanks in bulk to the combination of plate armor and passives like Sanctified Plates, on top of also having some of the most powerful defensive cooldowns like a damage reduction from Divine Protection, Large Absorb from Shield of Vengeance, and even immunities from either Divine Shield or Blessing of Protection which can prove situationally useful for avoiding one-shot mechanics. Not to mention, you can even throw out some self-heals if you really have to, but as a whole, it's almost impossible to die unless you mess up, meaning Retribution scores a perfect 10 out of 10 for survivability. When you hear the word utility, the first class that comes to mind will always be Paladin. Blessings provide a ton of situational usefulness, Freedom can be great for getting out roots and slows like the entangling affix for one, Sacrifice can help your team survive certain mechanics when they're out of defensives, and Blessing or Protection among situational uses can be a lifesaver if you're quick enough. Auras are also a factor to consider with Retribution Aura being great for added damage and Devotion Aura helping to boost your team's overall survivability. Then they've even got Lay on Hands to quickly recover any low health target, as well as Battle Res if you're too slow to react. Last but not least, Retribution Paladins also offer a valuable dispel for both diseases and poisons, making them particularly effective in dungeons like Neltharian's Lair, Brackenhide, and Underrot. On the topic of mob control, Ret is equally as adept, bringing a relatively short cooldown single target stun in Hammer of Justice, coupled up with the AoE interrupt abilities of Blinding Light. So overall, primarily in merit of their party utility, it would be silly to give them anything but a 10 for their overall utility. 
After tallying up the score, Retribution gets a total score of 26. Primarily attributed to its outstanding survivability and utility kit. It should be acknowledged, however, that Retribution excels more prominently in lower level keys where it serves as an excellent carry option. In higher key difficulties, Retribution faces challenges due to its comparatively low damage output, compounded by the prevalent preference for Holy Paladins as the go-to healers. These factors somewhat diminish Retribution's useful utility kit and overall viability in the upper echelons of key progression. Next up, we've got the highly agile and mobile melee DPS, Havoc Demon Hunter. Havoc Demon Hunters are currently regarded as one of the top melee DPS specs in terms of damage output. They excel in both AoE and single target situations, particularly after recent hotfix adjustments that have elevated their standing in single target damage output considerably. The core gameplay of a Demon Hunter revolves around a 40 second burst window, combining the power of the momentum talent to maximize their damage. By combining both Essence Break and I-Beam, they can unleash devastating bursts of AoE damage within a short time frame. One of their notable strengths is the passive cleave damage in their single target rotation, allowing them to efficiently handle high priority targets within packs. Additionally, the Demon Hunter's rather short cooldowns allow them to dish out consistent damage throughout the dungeon without much downtime. While they do admittedly fall slightly behind the more sought after DPS specs like Subtlety Rogue and Fury Warriors, Havoc Demon Hunters still maintain a strong damage profile. As a result, they receive a solid score of 7 out of 10 for damage. When it comes to survivability, Demon Hunters face some challenges, particularly in higher level Mythic Plus keys. The reason for this being a significant portion of their passive survivability stems from their leech and healing from things like fodder to the flame, especially during the Metamorphosis ability. Additionally, they benefit from a 6% magic damage reduction through Demonic Wards. However, issues arise when passive survivability alone isn't sufficient. As outside of their passive abilities, Demon Hunters only really have access to Darkness and Blur, with the latter, although being a rather short cooldown, down isn't overly effective, as if you're unable to dodge the mechanic, it only offers a minor 20% damage reduction. On the other hand, Darkness offers a stronger group-wide damage reduction and can often help the group survive most challenging mechanics. Nevertheless, in Season 2, Demon Hunters find it challenging to withstand consecutive heavy hits primarily from bosses. Netherwalk, while providing increased survivability, comes at a significant damage loss and is not a viable choice for most situations. As a result, Demon Hunters rank in the lower to middle range for survivability, earning a score of 6 out of 10. Utility is definitely a strong point for Demon Hunters, with the bulk of their points coming from their immense mob control. We keep mentioning how AoE stops are among the most desirable. Well, Demon Hunters just so happen to bring three different stops. First, Chaos Nova, with its short one minute cooldown, provides an uncapped area of effect stun, allowing Demon Hunters to interrupt and disable multiple targets simultaneously. And additionally, Sigil of Misery, though on a slightly longer cooldown, can disorient all mobs, preventing casts and granting a 20% damage increase when talented with Misery in defeat. Lastly, Metamorphosis, when activated, briefly stuns all mobs, which is very strong as it's not on diminishing returns. In addition to their AoE crowd control capabilities, Demon Hunters offer a ranged interrupt, the ability to remove magic debuffs with consume magic, a single target stun with fell eruption, and the multifunctional imprison ability, which can serve as an emergency stop for single targets, crowd control mobs during pulls, or even aid in pack skipping. However, in terms of party utility, Demon Hunters have some limitations. While they bring darkness, as mentioned earlier, their main contribution to the group is through Chaos Brand. This damage amplification is highly valuable for most groups, but is often provided by Vengeance Demon Hunters in higher level keys. Overall, we'll be rewarding them a 7 out of 10 for utility. In summary, Havoc Demon Hunters receive a total score of 20. While they provide a strong niche, it is currently overshadowed by Vengeance Demon Hunters. However, if there is a shift in the tank meta, Havoc Demon Hunters have the potential to shine. For mid to low level keys, Havoc Demon Hunters are among the top choices due to their exceptional AoE burst damage and consistent performance across all aspects of play. It should be noted that mastering the class can be challenging, contrary to the common stereotype that Demon Hunters are easy to play. The need for precise movement and the pressure to maximize damage within a short burst window requires skill and practice to excel. Our next spec is none other than Enhancement Shaman, a true rags to riches story in the Mythic Plus scene during this expansion. Enhancement Shaman in Season 2 is a force to be reckoned with, particularly when it comes to damage output. They are known for their exceptional AoE capabilities, making them one of the top performers in this regard. The combination of abilities like Crash Lightning, Chain Lightning, Sunder, and Lava Lash with Flame Shock spreading results in impressive sustained AoE damage. Additionally, the synergy between Hailstorm and Ice Strike allows for impactful Frost Shocks, further enhancing their AoE potential. 
Where the real burst damage comes from, though, is via the utilization of Primordial Wave. By spreading flame shocks and cleaving with Lightning Bolt, Enhancement Shamans can unleash devastating AoE burst while gaining a significant amount of haste. Some of the standout features of Enhancement Shaman are their versatility in target swapping, priority damage, and even funnel, where they're able to spread flame shock and spam lava lash while benefiting from the haste from Primordial. 10.1.5 did bring quite a few changes to Enhancement, most notably helping to aid in their single target damage output, which was previously lacking. These resulted in around a 6% increase on single target and very minor 1-2% to nerf to overall AoE. Overall, Enhancement Shaman earns a commendable score of 8 out of 10 in large part to their exceptional AoE damage. Survivability is a significant concern for Enhancement Shaman, particularly as healing demands have reached unprecedented levels this season. Their toolkit for damage mitigation is limited, relying primarily on abilities like Astral Shift, Nature's Guardian, and the additional health from Earth Elemental. While swapping into Ghost Wolf can provide some additional survivability, it is not always the most optimal choice and comes at a cost. The same goes for their self-healing. Again, while it can help offset some of the incoming damage, it comes at the expense of damage output. Considering these factors, we'll be giving Shaman a survivability score of 5 out of 10. When it comes to utility, Enhancement Shamans stand out with a toolkit that rivals that of Retribution Paladins. Their mob control is exceptional, offering powerful stops that can interrupt and stun multiple targets. Thunderstorm, enhanced by the talent Thundershock, delivers an impressive AoE stop every 30 seconds. Capacitor Totem provides another AoE stop and stun effect, which can have its cooldown significantly reduced when combined with Static Charge. Additionally, Sundering can be utilized for micro CC and interrupting casts on AoE pulls, while Purge allows for crucial spells. Of course, Wind Shear deserves special mention. This short cooldown ranged kick is a valuable asset for a melee class. In terms of group-wide utility, Enhancement Shamans are equally well equipped. They bring Poison Cleansing Totem, which remains highly useful in the current season. Ancestral Guidance enables them to convert a portion of their damage into healing for the entire party, providing valuable support during challenging encounters. Wind Rush Totem aids in swift maneuvering throughout dungeons and can assist with specific boss mechanics. Stone Skin offers a additional physical damage reduction, particularly advantageous during fortified weeks. And let's not forget Bloodlust, a crucial ability for any group. Overall, it would be silly to reward Shaman anything but a 10 for utility. With a total score of 23, Enhancement Shaman proves to be a formidable choice across all aspects. One significant factor contributing to their strength this season is the majority of their damage being magic-based. In a meta dominated by casters, this allows them to fit into various compositions, primarily due to their exceptional utility. Overall, Enhancement Shamans shine as one of the top melee options across all key levels. They excel in lower keys, being a great carry option thanks to their utility, while still maintaining a strong presence in the highest of key levels. If you're seeking a melee class to main this season, Enhancement Shaman stands out as an excellent choice. Windwalkers are our next spec, and are one that have sadly fallen slightly to the wayside this season, despite having a kit almost tailor-made for M+. Windwalker monks face their biggest struggle in the damage department currently. Their reliance on third-party sources and stacking versatility for damage output makes them notorious for lacking scalability. Nevertheless, Windwalker monks can still be viable and excel in front-loading damage thanks to their potent cooldown, Serenity. In terms of AoE damage, their output relies heavily on the RNG factor of Dance of Chi G. Their gameplay does become more intriguing and enjoyable with Touch of Death, complemented by talents such as Forbidden Technique, Meridian Strikes, and Fatal Flying Guillotine. However, their true strength lies in single target and priority damage. But despite this, their heavy dependence on cooldowns for any real damage output, coupled with issues like a weak tier set, poor scaling, and generally low numbers, places them around the middle of the pack. Therefore, we will assign them a score of 5 out of 10 for damage. When it comes to survivability, Windwalker Monks can be likened to tanks, boasting an impressive array of defensive cooldowns. Touch of Karma serves as both a survival tool and contributes to their damage output. Fortifying Brew provides damage reduction and increases maximum health. Diffuse Magic allows them to negate almost all magic damage, while Dampen Harm helps them survive potential one-shot mechanics from bosses. 10.1.5 also improved Monk's survivability further, giving them access to Yulon's Grace for certain dungeons where Diffuse may not be useful. Additionally, Windwalkers possess a degree of durability thanks to their high versatility levels and passive avoidance. However, compared to the passive survivability of Fury Warriors and Retribution Paladins, Windwalkers fall slightly behind. Their reliance on using cooldowns for survival leaves room for mistakes. Considering these factors, we'll assign them a score of 8 for survivability. 
Windwalker monks offer a more niche set of party utility with a focus on passive buffs. Mystic Touch, their equivalent of Demon Hunter's Chaos brand, provides a physical damage increase. However, its value is considerably lower in the current meta, where many specs deal magic damage. Close to hard and generous poor are also factors to consider, offering passive boosts to both avoidance and healing, which can help considerably. Aside from that, the only real party utility Windwalker offers is a dispel for both diseases and poisons, making them particularly effective in dungeons like Neltharian's Lair, Brackenhide, and Underrot. Where Windwalkers shine utility-wise, though, is in terms of mob control. The AoE stun from Leg Sweep is highly regarded as one of the best crowd control abilities in Mythic Plus. Additionally, Ring of Peace is a versatile tool that allows you to skip packs when combined with Paralysis, interrupt multiple mobs, create distance from dangerous enemies, or even reposition enemies out of affixes such as Sanguine. So we'll be rewarding them a respectable 7 out of 10. After calculating the total score, Windwalker receives a solid rating of 20 out of 30, placing them in the middle of the pack. Windwalkers have consistently thrived in Mythic Plus content and are just a few number adjustments away from becoming a meta melee spec. Not to mention, in the event of a shift toward a more melee focused meta, Windwalkers have the potential to climb the ranks, thanks in large part to their Mystic Touch passive. But if you're seeking a versatile melee option that excels in burst damage and obliterating packs with Touch of Death, Windwalker Monk is a compelling choice. Apex Predator turned prey, feral druids have largely been eclipsed by their balanced druid counterpart, however they still possess the potential to mark their territory this season. On the damage front, feral excels at one thing in particular and that's their huge sustained AoE damage coming from their bleed effects. This is made possible thanks to talents like Double Clawed Rake and Primal Wrath, allowing you to easily spread your bleeds to multiple targets. That, then coupled with Rampant Ferocity and Apex Predator's Craving, causes you to generate Ferocious Bite procs, which will then cleave as well making your entire kit AoE, including your generators. However, where Feral Druids struggle is in terms of their single target damage, where even after the 10.1.5 edition of Dire Fixation, they're still nowhere near the level of some of the more meta specs. Meaning, while they may excel at lower level keys, especially on Fortified Weeks, they're far less desirable in higher level keys, especially compared to their balanced Druid counterparts. So for this reason, we'll be scoring Ferals a 6 out of 10 for damage. Survivability-wise, Druids stand out as one of the most resilient melee specializations. They possess several tools to enhance their survivability, such as the relatively short cooldown of Bark Skin or longer cooldown of Survival Instincts, in addition to Renewal to mitigate or heal through most levels of incoming damage as well as also having the option, especially in higher end keys, to utilize bear form, where by shifting inside prior to mechanics can allow them to survive due to the increased health and durability. Not to mention, you can also do a relatively good job of sustaining yourself through a large majority of damage via the instant proc heals provided by Predatory Swiftness. So as a whole, Feral Druids will be getting an 8 out of 10 for survivability, losing a few points due to being reliant on pre-using cooldowns for the bulk of their survivability. One aspect where Feral is not lacking is with their utility. In terms of mob control, they are fantastic, offering multiple AoE crowd control options such as Incapacitating Roar, Typhoon, and even Ursul's Vortex, as well as boasting an abundance of strong party utility to support the group such as Innervate and Nature's Vigil, as well as even a Battle Res, all of which are valued very highly. Additionally, they possess both a Poison and a Decurse removal ability, which can prove highly useful in specific dungeons. One of the most significant aspects of their utility kit as a whole has to be the party-wide buff provided by Mark of the Wild. This buff is arguably the best raid buff in Mythic Plus content, as it offers both damage and damage reduction for the entire party. For this reason, we'll be giving Feral Druid a score of 8 out of 10. With a total score of 22, Feral lands in the middle of the pack. If you're seeking a challenge this season, Feral stands out as one of the most demanding specs in terms of rotational complexity. However, if your preference lies in unleashing incredibly high sustained AoE damage, there are few melee specs that can rival the prowess of Feral Druids. This makes them an excellent choice for lower level keys, where their exceptional utility and sustained AoE damage can easily carry groups. Our final spec is for those of you secretly wanting to play a ranged DPS but still identify as a melee, Survival Hunter. Survival at the moment is heavily flying under the radar in the Mythic Plus scene, but are one of the most dominant melees from a pure damage standpoint, boasting a well-rounded profile without any significant weaknesses, excelling in both AoE and single target damage. The Wildfire Infusion talent, coupled with their tier set, revolves around Wildfire Bombs, becoming the focal point of their overall damage. Additionally, Survival has access to strong offensive abilities with short cooldowns 
cooldowns, such as Explosive Shot, Death Chakram, and Fury of the Eagle. They also possess a major cooldown called Coordinated Assault, which, when combined with Birds of Prey, enables them to unleash high burst and priority damage in larger scale pulls. One of the major strengths is that despite having these cooldowns, survival is by no means dependent on them. Considering these factors, though it may be a point of contention, we firmly believe survival deserves a score of 8 out of 10 for damage. While damage does indeed carry the majority of the value that a DPS spec brings, you can't underestimate survivability, or in the case of Hunter, lack thereof. Survival, despite its name, is heavily lacking in this department, having almost non-existent passive survivability, meaning no self-healing and no passive mitigation. How they look to survive is primarily via their long cooldown defensives, Aspect of the Turtle and Survival of the Fittest, which even then have their weaknesses, as well as also having both Exhilaration for the Minor Heal and Fortitude of the Bear if you're playing with a Tenacity pet, which is recommended for higher keys. But it's fair to say, especially now in Season 2, Hunter's overall survivability kit is just nowhere near enough to combat the consistent onslaught from most bosses and require extensive focus healing and externals to survive higher end keys. As a result, we'll be giving Survival a low end score of 4 out of 10. Hunter Utility has always been a subject of debate, as they are notorious for lacking utility tools. Their standout utility comes in the form of Primal Rage, which provides the Bloodlust effect, though it does come with certain limitations. In addition to Bloodlust, Hunters possess some niche mob control options. Freezing Trap can be situationally useful for crowd control, particularly on the last boss in Freehold. Intimidation Stun can be useful for locking down single mobs, while Tar Trap can provide value if the group lacks a slow. Trank Shot proves handy for dispelling enrages or managing fixates, while Binding Shot is often the most useful among the utility options. It can provide value in specific situations such as corner pulls or halting retreating mobs. Lastly, Misdirection remains consistently useful for assisting tanks in pulling or maintaining threat. Considering these aspects, we believe Survival deserves a rather low score of 4 out of 10 for utility. When we tally up the scores, Survival falls on the lower end with a total of 16. However, it's important to keep in mind that in most key levels, except for the highest ones, the primary value of a DPS specialization lies in its damage output. This is where Survival Hunter truly shines, especially when compared to its ranged counterparts, as it consistently delivers high sustained damage without heavy reliance on cooldowns or RNG. So even despite its limited utility and survivability, don't let those aspects discourage you from considering Survival Hunter. Before we conclude, we want to emphasize that our rankings should never discourage anyone from playing a melee DPS spec they enjoy. This tier list serves as a general overview of melee DPS spec performance, but it may not capture the full picture in every scenario. In lower end keys, factors like raw damage output often take precedence, as coordinated pulls and precise cooldown management may be less critical. It's also important to consider the specific value a spec brings to your group composition. For example, Retribution may receive a high ranking, but could lose effectiveness when paired with the Holy Paladin. Ultimately, the most crucial aspect is finding a spec that aligns with your preferred playstyle and brings joy to your gameplay experience. Your personal enjoyment and satisfaction should always be the driving force behind your choice of a melee DPS spec. Lastly, before we wrap things up, we're currently working alongside some of the best players in the world to develop high-quality guides for Mythic Plus. With that in mind, what topics would you like us to cover next? Do you have any specific pain points you would like help with? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.